Now one of the things here on the A-Team we always do is try to help out any of the youngsters in the neighborhoods that have go-karts and mini bikes and one of my favorite kids, Cole, a next door neighbor about three houses down, has a mini bike that's leaking oil. We're going to try to work on it today. Here's my neighbor Cole and he's got his mini bike that looks like it's leaking oil from somewhere. We don't know where yet but we're going to have to take this cover off take a quick look at what's going on. Luckily he downloaded the manual so we have a uh, some fighting chance of knowing what we're doing. We checked it has the correct amount of oil. And what else did we check? Nothing. Oh, there, now there's, correct. yep. You gotta take out all the Phillips screws and then there's two Wait bolts there. on the bike. Basic mini bike repair. <laughs> just, just pull back fender right off. We gotta get this off. I wanna be able to get my hands in there. But what I'm gonna try to do, I got a, one of those little Harbor Freight lights because it's, it's leaking oil somewhere, supposedly. And what we're going to try to do is clean it up with a rag and see, at least we can find a leak. And if you need parts, at least we'll be able to figure out what part you need here. It looked like the whole bottom of this was covered with oil, so I don't know. Now Cole doesn't know, maybe what he just did is put in too much oil. But we checked the oil level, it looks okay, according to the manual. No or yes? You got enough in there? I think I did. Okay. You got the choke on? It is. Okay, so now we can see the oil. Can you see where it is, Cole? Okay, it's leaking behind there, so there's a seal back there. Okay, so now we know what's happening. It's leaking behind this, this, the flywheel assembly. So there's, a, there's an oil seal back there. And I don't know if you need a puller to pull this off. Let's see. I don't know if you need it. But let's see if we can pull this off. I, I'm sure you got to do... You know what? You probably have to take this side of the engine off to put that seal in. But, but if you can get the seal, of course, you can, we can do it. So, we know it's not the seal, the shaft seal is fine. The gasket is leaking right up on the top here, you can see it coming out. So, in the reality, that's the easier of the two things to fix. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just check if we torque down the bolts, if that's gonna help. Maybe some of the bolts are loose by torquing them down. But, but I think if we have to make a gasket, we can at least pull this side off the engine and make a gasket. So what we're doing, we're taking where this is leaking. It's only leaking in one spot. I'm going to try to use gasket sealer on the outside to seal this. I'll get some compressed air and blow this out. It's only leaking where the gasket, there must be a, a bad gasket up there. All the bolts are tight. And we have nothing to lose because if this doesn't seal it, what's going to happen? i got to pull the side of the engine off then and then put, a new, put or make a gasket. But at least we found the problem now. All that simple green off that's in there, get it dry, where, that, where it's leaking. We're going to try to do a little thing that, because of course we're doing on a limited budget, what we want to try to do is, I'm cleaning that area, I'm going to take the Black Magic Permatex and make like a band-aid. It's only leaking over one a spot maybe uh, an inch long, and a lot of times that'll dry overnight and I've, I've had that seal up just fine on motorcycles. And in this case, if it doesn't work, then we, of course we have to take that side of the engine out, apart. And I'll, I can even make a gasket if it's not available. These are probably pretty common engines you probably could buy the gasket. But my student here, Cole is doing great for his first day on the job. <laughs> Clean it up, baby. I don't want to work in a dumpster. Next thing is we're just going to clean that area with brake parts cleaner thoroughly. Use some more compressed air. Get it as clean as we can. And then I'm going to put that black magic gasket sealer on it. And believe it or not, 90% of the time that'll get you... This is a mini bike. I mean, this is not a Ferrari. So if we can do this for Cole, he could put all that extra money toward his new Ducati. Now I know everybody out there is probably saying... Wow, what a butcher doing it that way. You should pull it apart and put a new gasket. And we, 
if we have to, we have to. And we know we can make gaskets. But this stuff, what I've found, Ultra Black is the name of it, Permatex. What I've seen this do is when you have a gasket where it's, it, it's only leaking in one little tiny area, you can paint on a coat of this. This is so hard to get off your hands. If, if you get it on your hands, you're dead in the water. So what I do is take a Q-tip and I'm going to jam it into that area and build up a, basically a bead of this like you would use it for seal. Now, since there's not a lot of pressure in it, there isn't, enough, there isn't a thousand pounds of pressure. Maybe this will last a week. Maybe it'll last a year. And hey, let's face it, if, if the free repair, if it works, and if it doesn't, again, we always have a fallback, we can always pull that engine apart. So day one ends. Cole's first lesson in Mike mini bike technology. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna hopefully not have to take that apart, but we won't know until tomorrow. So this is the end of part one. Tomorrow we'll see if it's a lucky day. So hope you enjoyed watching our little video. And we're I, I Cole looks like he's gonna take to this like duck soup. He's a junior member of the A team. So thanks for watching. I'm not sure you can see where I put the sealer. Now that remains flexible too, and what I have is on some some parts of bikes, because they get hot and cold, hot and cold, you can't really use something that's not flexible. That stays flexible. That stuff is really miracle stuff. Now, we're going to wait till tomorrow to start this. We're going to clean up the garage. Cole's going to come back tomorrow around lunchtime, and we'll see if it works. Take off each one of the screws, put them in a clear plastic bag. We'll keep that separate over there. And tomorrow when you come back, if this works, boy, it's going to be your lucky day. If it doesn't work, eh, then we got we got some work to do. But anyway, it's, it's always worth giving it a shot. And then we'll clean up here. So this is day two of trying to repair the oil leak on Cole's mini bike. We're going to go out to the garage. That sealer has dried 24 hours and see if it's Cole's lucky day. Now what I found, and when I've done other repairs like this, is just letting it dry an extra day is good, but I know Cole is itching. He's on his way over here right now. He's itching to see if this is going to work. So obviously the first thing, we'll let it start and warm up. And see if it's leaking. It leaked right away yesterday. What do you think? See any oil coming out? Put the chain guard back on and just go out in the street in front of the house and ride up and down five ten minutes and then bring it back here we'll see if it leaks i don't think it's going to leak that's and by the way that has worked for me on many other projects before certainly on this it's uh saving us a lot of labor and possibly a lot of money but it's a great way to start learning about how to do mechanical things i don't think you could get any better than this so you always look to see what part went on first and if you were doing this by yourself, what's a good idea is take pictures of it and lay the parts out now in order. So then you just go backwards. I think you'll figure it out. There's only about 10 bolts there. Now because we got all the bolts in the bag, it'll be pretty obvious which bolts go where. Now you know how to reverse a wrench like that? I do. Okay. Which way was Did you reverse it? Or is it? No, just when it goes, look at it. If it's like going like a clock, it's going to tighten the bolts. The opposite of a clock, it loosens them. And it's, it's always good. Start all the bolts by hand if you can before you tighten any of them down. Just get a couple of threads caught. Because what happens if you tighten one real tight and then the other one doesn't line up even by a little bit, you make it difficult for yourself. Hey, one thing that's good about knowing how to work on your own stuff, when you're done with a ride, check that all these screws are tight too. Because when you reassemble something, sometimes there's grease on the screws and they they back out a little bit. If you tighten them after a ride, you'll be in good shape. Moment of truth: out of the garage, and let's see if he can crash. <laughs> you don't want it. You don't want to crash. All right.
Now obviously before he goes for a real ride, we're gonna get some gear on him, but I just wanna see if this leaks a puddle of oil like it did before. Should be good though. Other things I've repaired this way really have stood. I got stuff, yeah. Did you turn the gas on? I did. It's on. Maybe you don't have any gas left. Well, it's funny, I can remember being this young and uh, being excited about having my, well, put, no, you gotta put the kickstand down. <laughs> Here we go, MotoGP. <laughs> All right, can you ride up and down? Yeah, just let it warm up. Now, I could remember being Cole's age, and I could remember how exciting it was to have your first MotoGP bike. We need more nitrous. <laughs> Are you happy? Yeah, I yeah. am. All right.